Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome to the channel. So I finally get to bring you guys my God Crow Magic and Necromancer PvP build. Now the clips I'm about to show you is me exposing a super sweaty stand blade. Now I don't normally do this. You know, normally I like to do 1vxs, but this build is absolutely amazing. It has so much burst potential and no, it's not a harmony build. The reason I'm showcasing this is because you can 1vx people with this build at similar or equal skill. So I had two sweaties on me the entire time. I end up 1vxing the sweaty stand blade and boy was he super, super salty, man. Hopefully you enjoy the clip. Let's get into it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let this be a lesson to you peasants out there. If you're going to teabag, please be able to back it up. Thank you very much. All right, with the toxicity out of the way, hopefully you guys enjoyed that little uh, the little exposure. Um, I know I did. So let's get into the build, guys. This is a non-harmony build, and I'm not going to waste any time recording this because my first take of this uh, took me over 25 minutes, and that is way too long for a build video. So I'm going to shorten this down as much as I can. And yeah, so let's hop into it, fellas. So here's the character sheet, completely unbuffed. Notice our magic recovery, it is absolutely abysmal. Don't worry, our sustain is way better than our Magicka Dragonite, believe it or not. If you guys are unfamiliar with my Magicka Dragonite builds, well, they're awesome. Because, you know, I'm Horcrux, that's my class, that's what I do. So, my sustain is virtually infinite. I'll show you guys how we're able to do that here in just a moment. Our spell critical will go up to 31.74% in Cyrodiil. Spell resistances go up to yeah whatever well it doesn't matter because we have like 60 percent flat mitigation on top of our resistances our spell damage does indeed go up to 6k with our continuous attack buff now we are a britain for the class um if you do not run vampire you can get away with running high elf as well as dark elf if you choose to run vampire i would heavily suggest running the britain to offset that cost increase uh you don't necessarily have to run Vampire. Um, I'm not on this build just because I don't like using Vampire. Plus, my skill points, uh, well, I don't have a lot on this character. So, yeah. The Mundus ran the Lover for maximum spell penetration. Forgot to mention, spell penetration goes up to 20,000. Yes, it goes up to 20,000 with our sets that we're running. Bewitch Sugar Skulls for the food. So, not only do you have 6k spell damage, the 20k spell penetration man you hit so hard with this build i love it i absolutely love it and your burst comes out of nowhere sometimes just you just accidentally delete people with 12k blast bone this i don't get it. it it's just funny so first step we're running is master's lightning staff now, i don't have the perfected one uh you know for me running a disease enchantments on this with a sharp and trade the disease enchantment is for the uh the healing debuff now since we're running a destructive reach in this uh with a, a shock Lightning Staff, uh, it automatically implies, applies minor vulnerability, so there's no need for a Shock Glyph. Again, this increases your spell and weapon damage by 600 when you go in for your burst. It's very important that we have this here. Next up, we're running. Guys, you can delete, you can click out the video now, but it's Iron Blood. I don't care what you guys say. This is amazing on the Magicka Necromancer. It's probably better on the Magicka Necromancer than it is the Magicka Dragonite. So, you get 30% mitigation. Your ghost, which I'll go over, gets you 10% mitigation. Okay. Sustained by suffering. That can get up to another 20% mitigation. We have minor protection. We have major protection. That is another 15% mitigation on top of all of our other mitigations that we have. Now, I'm pretty sure, do not quote me on this, that the mitigations is almost additive. It, it, I mean, you can get up to some pretty high mitigation. Like, it does diminish a little bit. I'm not sure how the diminished curve works, but you can get some really, really high innate just just flat damage mitigation without your resistances that's why i love the magic magic and necromancer so much so the weapon damage enchantment on the back bar is good because not only will this help us with our burst but this also helps with our healing as well next up we're running is battle works 
First thing to note is we are running 5 light, 1 medium, 1 heavy. Because I like to roll dodge quite a bit. I love the spell penetration from light armor. I love the spell crit from light armor. Since we are not running Malakanth, crit is a, a pretty important stat. Again, we do get up to like 31.7% when we're in Cyrodiil. Okay. So we're running battle orgs. You're on well fitted. Imp and sturdy. It does not matter. So the battle orgs, what it does, it gives you spell damage, weapon damage, and then the two piece. We never use ultimate. It gives you spell damage per ult consume and also gives you spell penetration times 23 per ult consume for 20 seconds, uh, which is phenomenal. You pretty much have a 33% uptime and you have just a lot of intrinsic spell penetration and spell damage on top of you know what you already have, which is amazing. Next set we're running, guys, is Desert Rose. We're running Desert Rose on the body, 5 life. So this set gives you armor, gives you health, gives you max magicka, then the 5 piece whenever you take damage, you restore 2000 magicka, has a 25% chance every four seconds. Guys, this is up 100% of the time. And sorry if I'm going too fast. I'm just trying to hurry this along because it's the holidays. Turkey season is here. I know you guys have better things to do. So to put this in perspective, this is essentially three times as good as Lich. It is by far the best magic of sustain set in the game. Uh, you can challenge me on that down in the comments. I'll be looking forward to it. So I don't normally suggest running a double bar set. But this is an exception of just how well it performs. There's no other set like it. There's not a stamina variant. And when it comes to your magic of sustain, if you're 1vxing, constantly taking pressure, this is just overall like the best sustain set you're ever going to get. So what this allows us to do, running Desert Rose, this allows us to use no recovery. This is all the sustain we will ever need. So on the jewelry, we have Iron Blood. Again, I transmuted all these to Infuse. Spell damage just so we can maintain our 5-1-1 armor weights because I think you don't need any more heavy or medium than we already have for your damage mitigation so you're better off running uh, 5 light which also helps with roll dodges. My dog in the background, he, he's, he's like just, just pawing himself, he, he's a good boy. But yeah we're running uh, all spell damage on this as well because you don't need any more. That's how we're able to get such high spell damage to begin with because everything stacks tremendously in Cyrodiil like all the way up to 6k. It's pretty crazy with 20k spell pen. Mm, it's that's good stuff, right? So let's go into your skills. First, shock reach. This is to proc our 600 spell damage from our master's infern uh, master's lightning staff. Uh, we use this right before we go in for our burst combo. This also applies minor vulnerability, increasing your overall damage on whoever you hit by five percent. Running stalking blast bones. Running remote totem. This is the most slept on skill in the Magicka Necromancer's kit. This is amazing. It's an undodgeable, unblockable CC. It constantly, constantly, constantly pumps out CCs and fears on people around you. If you're getting jumped on, if you like playing the turn and burn method, which I do, obviously, because that's what all my builds revolve around. This is amazing turnaround set. It'll offer, it creates so much space for you to get back on your feet. Plus, you can toss it way out here. Look how far you can toss this thing. Yeah, you can catch people in stealth with this. It's pretty crazy. And also, it gives you minor protection. Now, Force Pulse. You can run whatever spammable you want here. This is entirely up to you. You can run the Assigic Order skill line as well, LE Weapon. Uh, again, that's up to you. Avid Boneyard. We do need a little bit more burst, so we are going to use Avid Boneyard for the Synergy proc. And then Dawnbreaker is smiting. Now, let me go over the uh, burst rotation really quick here, guys, because it is a little confusing. Um, I think the Magicka Necromancer has one of the hardest burst combos in the game because it requires you to not get bugged out in your synergy to not fuck up. So I want to break this down very slow for you. I want to do it fast once and then I want to break it down. So you want to have your Blast Bones, you want to Light Attack, Shock Reach, Dondi, Boom, Synergy, and Dead. So let me break that down for you. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. So the very first thing you want to do. We'll wait till we get out of combat here is get your blast bones going because this blast bones i do it does some weird shit sometimes it says two and a half seconds but this thing has a mind of its own it really does so the very first thing you want to do is have your blast bones queued up cool so it takes two and a half seconds light attack on your back bar all right so now you have five seconds of the increased spell damage on the back bar shock reach okay so now you have an additional 600 so in total just from these two alone the way spell damage stacks you have 1300 spell damage extra for your burst combo next you want to Dawnbreaker. What this allows you to do, this procs Battle Orgs, which increases your spell damage and your spell penetration per ultimate consumed. You could potentially use a 500 ultimate, right? And the way this stacks, 
That's 500 Ultima already tacked on to 1200 you're already having. That's 1700. And if, if it's stacked, you know, multiplicatively, it's more like 1800 extra spell damage for your burst combo. So, when you Dawnbreaker, then your Blast Bones is going to hit. Your Blast Bones is going to get, like, we'll just say 1500 extra spell damage on top of this. And if it crits, good lord, it hits like a Mack truck. So, your Blast Bones comes through the air, and then you throw your synergy down, and you activate it. A thing about the synergy, it's not the center of the circle, it's where you're standing inside the circle. It radiates out from you. One more thing to note with the Avid Boneyard, it is super bugged when it comes to the synergy. We'll wait for the, the uh, CC, or not the, the timer to come off of the, uh, the synergy. So look, I toss it here, I can activate it. I toss it here, I try to run into it, you cannot activate it. I walk into it, you can activate it. I toss it out here, I try to run into it, you cannot. If I toss it here and walk into it, you can. So that's bug number one. Bug number two, if you, for whatever reason, get caught with the CC in the middle of your burst combo and you have your Avid Boneyard on the ground, you cannot activate it. You have to reapply the Avid Boneyard. And by that time, your burst combo, your burst window, it's pretty much gone and you're screwed. So what I suggest during your entire combo, you're block casting every single ability you have. So the only way you're going to get CC'd is from a streak, a fossilized. I'm, I'm sure there's another stun out there that goes through block, but please be block casting the entire time. Obviously, when you cast your Dawn Break, you're not be able to block cast because you'll actually cancel the animation to it. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you want to pop a movable pot as well, that will help you with your burst combo. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, in my last video, I took like another five minutes to <laughs> describe this burst. Um, it, it takes some practice. It's by far the hardest combo to line up on any class in my opinion like the magic and necromancer that's his problem you need to practice this burst combo to get good at the class uh, you just do back bar running spirit guardian this is why you're so tanky he heals you plus it transfers 10 percent of any damage that is dealt to you to an invulnerable npc untargetable npc resistance flesh this is probably one of the most op heals in the game to be honest i would prefer this over breath of life because it heals you for you know a shit ton and then you get spell and physical resistance equal to you know whatever the the amount healed now be careful when you heal yourself with this because if you're looking at someone it's actually going to heal them instead of you so if you're going to heal yourself with well, fucking look at the ground or something so you're not accidentally healing uh other people other than yourself Rank Summoner's Armor, do not run the other armor, the beckon Beckoning Armor, because it does mess up your burst combo. It pulls people in, cool, but also puts them on CC cooldown, and it's really hard to land your combo. So please run Summoner's Armor, plus it reduces the cost of your uh, Blast Bone, Skeletal Mage, and uh, Spirit Mender by 15%. Mortal Coil, this is a pseudo Rapid Regen. Uh, this is about 50% of what Rapid Regen does, but also restores stamina, and it's free to cast, as long as you have a corpse on the ground, which you will always have a corpse on the ground. Fish and Claws is, is your back bar ultimate. I I really don't know what to say about this. Like this thing is phenomenal. Like there's a really cool burst combo you can line up with a remote totem and Pest and Colossus, but you it that that's a combo for another day for a, another advanced video because um it's definitely not as clean as the one I showed you, um, but it can be done. Essentially, you want to toss your remote totem down. You want to toss your Pest and Colossus down. Everyone's instinct is to roll dodge. Well, when they try to roll dodge the pulse from the remote totems will catch them in the roll dodge and then they're going to be stuck inside your pestilent colossus for the entire duration so these two synergize really well you guys are sleeping on remote totem if you're not using it so that does it for the skills that does it for the uh gear setup which i think i covered everything please let me know down in the comments if i missed anything let's quickly hop into the champion points because i'm trying to Get this done in under 15 minutes because the last video was like 25 minutes. I was not going to put that out there. So uh, we have Biting Ores since most of our damage is AoE. We have Mastered Arms also. Most of our damage is direct damage. We have Ironclad to reduce direct damage taken by 10% as well. And then we have... Oh, excuse me. And then we have Focus Mending. You can toss Focus Mending over into Fighting Finesse because we do rely on crits pretty heavily. So if you want to go for more crit healing, more crit damage, this is more of a, a pseudo-offensive champion point. Uh, definitely put it here if you don't want to put it into uh, Focus Mending. Red Tree. So this is where we get our uh, major protection from. We're running Relentlessness. When you're stunned or feared, you get major protection. Pains Refugee. You can get up to 20% damage mitigation per negative effect on you, which is pretty crazy. Sustained by Suffering gives you 100 
and 50 magic is stamina and health recovery the health recovery is underwhelming but eh whatever and then last we have survival instincts while afflicted by a status effect which is all the time your core combat abilities cost 25 percent less this is roll dodging sneaking breaking free and blocking okay green tree doesn't matter i just spec'd out all the speed things because uh, i like to run to my death super quick you know <laughs> all right uh, yeah, that does it for the build, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this type of video. Sorry for the exposure video at the beginning. That was too toxic for you guys. Um, I felt, yeah, you know, I felt froggy. I felt like that was something that had to be done with this build. You can 1VX tremendously on this build. I tried to do something that's not a Harmony build. I think it is rather successful. Let me know if you guys have any success on this whatsoever. Also, guys, happy Turkey Day. Please take time. Enjoy time with the family. Take it easy. Unplug from video games for a while. I know ESO is amazing, right? And terrible. And, you know, there's all kinds of mixed feelings on ESO. Please just enjoy time with the family and just uh, dopamine detox, right? Thank you for watching the video. Let me know down in the comments what I need to do better or what to improve on or just comment on how terrible or how good I am. Either way. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to eviscerate the like and subscribe button. I will catch you guys in the next one.